Two years ago you visited a house of ill repute in France, he said, and when you left you did not come away alone. An evil spirit accompanied you in your aura, seeing in you a channel for the earthly expression of his own sinful desires. The young man was astonished at this mention of a visit which he shamefully admitted it to be true. But how did Red Cloud know of an escapade which had never been repeated? My son, much is known that is beyond your understanding, the guide told him. It is sufficient that you know only that the spirit which now possesses you shall this night depart from your aura. And with his passing health will return to you in your body. The exorcism which followed was, in the words of the witnesses, a raucous, rambunctious performance in which the threats and screaming blasphemies uttered through me, Red Cloud had allowed the entity temporarily to control me, eloquently betrayed the spirit to be of a very low order. The protests gave way to whining whimpering, while the circle members added the persuasion of their words to the force Red Cloud was exerting to dislodge the unwanted creature. The end came suddenly and without warning. The whining and whimpering ceased and all was silence. I next saw the young man two or three years later. He called, bringing a young woman with him. He asked me if I remembered him and for a moment I didn't. I apologized, explaining that I met so many people. They were beginning to say I was mad, he went on, but Red Cloud said I was possessed by an evil spirit. Do you remember now? I nodded. I remember. And who was right? Red Cloud, he said emphatically, though I wasn't convinced at the time. The idea of evil spirit sounded so medieval. But I haven't had another attack from that day to this. And that's proof enough for me. It satisfies my wife, too, doesn't it, darling? He looked down at her confidently as she smiled up at him. Completely, darling, she said.